can everyone tell me what uh, what you remember about context and the context of 1984? So every time we say something, we want to say why it's significant as well. So post World War II. So we've just had the Second World War. We've seen the end of Nazi Germany. Why is it important that there, well, or why is it relevant or influential that there was a Second World War? How did the war end, by the way? That's important. So basically, the Second World War ends actually with the atom dropping of the atomic bombs on Japan. Actually, that's how it ended, right? So Nagasaki and Hiroshima in Japan have these atomic bombs dropped on them by America killing tens of thousands, probably in effect hundreds of thousands of people. So when you say the end of totalitarian society, basically it ends that way. But Germany was just one form of totalitarian society. Nazi Germany lose the war, those bombs end the war. But Stalin, who was on Australia's side during the Second World War, Stalin in the Soviet Union, now Russia, the main country that's relevant to 1984. Russia, we didn't call it Russia then, we called it the Soviet Union, okay? The Soviet Union was on our side. What then happened is Stalin was rising up and as Hitler, who was obviously a dictator and he basically orchestrated the Holocaust where like six to eight million Jewish people were murdered. What then happened is Stalin started to rise up after the Second World War. So even though Australia, America, you know, we were all on the winning side and with along with what is now Russia, Stalin, who led the Soviet Union, was arguably an even worse dictator than Hitler. Stalin is a totalitarian leader of the communist kind. Hitler wasn't communist. He was what's called a fascist, right? So he actually discriminated against particular groups of people. But it doesn't mean that there wasn't some aspect of capitalism operating on in his society. But with Stalin, right, it was more communist, which means the government owns everything. So the government has all the power with Stalin and he's a totalitarian leader who starts to manipulate history. That, that's what happens just after the Second World War. But what's so significant about the Second World War itself is the way it ended. So the dropping of the atomic bombs kind of end the war, right? But then a Cold War emerges. So there are proxy wars, but there's no direct physical combat between the two main countries. There are kind of all these other little wars that happen during, but there's no big conflict. So it's a Cold War in that it's not, it's not that, it's not an intense period of physical combat. So instead, it's all about fear. What was the fear though? After the dropping of the atomic bombs, Soviet Russia, who represented communism, and America, who represents capitalism, what are they both fighting for? They're fighting for power. America doesn't want to see communism take over the world. Remember, communism is where the government gets all the power. They own everything. America does not want that. The land of the free, right? They want everyone to be free and democratic. They want the government to be democratically elected. They don't like the system that Russia has and they don't want the whole world to be taken over by communism because of totalitarian leaders like Stalin. What was the fear that made the Cold War? A Cold War is a war about fear more than the actual conflict. So nuclear warfare was like the underlying fear of the whole thing, right? Because America and Soviet Union, the Soviet Union, again, that's Russia, because they're competing for ideological power, the way you do that is through building nuclear weapons. So both of them start to build lots of nuclear weapons, which means that the people of each country are really scared. Because if they have a war, what's going to happen to the world? It's basically going to end. That's why there were lots of texts that talked about a post-apocalyptic world, like an apocalypse, where basically we just destroy ourselves because we both fire nukes at each other and the whole world blows up. So that's what people were scared for, scared of for about 45 years. It didn't end till about 1991. So from 1945 to 1991, we're in this state of fear. So do you see the way that Orwell taps into that fear early on? And he says, hey, fear is going to get you in trouble. Fear is gonna mean that you're not questioning things. Fear is gonna make you exploitable, okay? 